Hey folks, welcome to Thunder Punk Radio. I am Paul, I'm here with my buddy, Michael Broderick. We're gonna be doing another unboxing video. And I understand, unbox I think unboxing videos can be lame, but I'm pretty excited that uh, my buddy's getting into a new type of shooting and I feel like excitement's contagious, so I wanted to share that with everybody. So, all right, yeah. <laughs> so tell a little bit uh, about yourself and like what we're doing and how yeah. you into it. Right? Yeah, yeah, well, uh, you know, Paul and I have lunch every Tuesday. We've been talking about this for a little bit. Uh, I'm, a, I'm an actor and uh, I'm actually a Marine Corps veteran. I served the tail end of the Cold War, uh, but I don't have a lot of tactical training because I was, I was in the air wing side, the logistics and embarkation for uh, HMLA 167, which is Hueys and Cobras. I didn't get a lot of trigger time. You know, we'd just qual every year on our, on our rifle and then uh, qual and pistol later in my career. And then, um, and I actually was one of the last groups of people that didn't have to go to infantry school after boot camp. Okay. Like not people, but like but when I was when I went through boot camp, you just went to your school afterwards, and then you went out in the fleet, you know. And then uh, General Gray came in, and became commandant. He said every every Marine's got to go to uh, infantry school. So I missed that that experience. Gotcha. So everything I've learned about uh, really learned about firearms and tactics I learned in Hollywood on set or or working with uh, some of my friends who are in the special operations community. Okay, like so that. which as far as like you learning stuff on Hollywood, you. Learned good habits, surprisingly. Well, that's, that, I've been fortunate in my friends. You know, right, I've got right. a lot of friends in the, in the special operations community. We go to the range together, stuff like that. I learned some things. You can't do a lot of stuff in California at most right. ranges. You know, everything's like every pistol stays on the bench, blah, blah, blah. You can't go from the holster. But I, I've had some opportunities to do that. And speaking with you and, and getting to know uh, your mindset, I, I said, you know, I want to get into preparedness and things like that and being ready to, to react in, in, in an emergency. And you recommended putting together a belt, and that's what we're going to start doing today. Yep. So real quick, uh, a battle belt or a, a race belt, if you want to call it, or a fighting belt. I love these because it allows you to take more classes. I mean, even if you carry concealed, I think it's a good idea to get an outside the waistband holster and a dedicated belt because you don't, well, a lot of classes won't let you draw from concealed carry position, whether or not, you know, they do. It's just, if you just want to focus on fundamentals of shooting and reacting, you don't always have to do it this way. The skills transfer. It doesn't matter if you're concealed or outside the waistband. It's all good practice and they all complement each other. So, all right, cool. You got the, you got the stuff? Yeah, man. So, uh, thank you, Amazon and the various companies. That, uh, <laughs> you want to start with this? We'll start yeah, with sure. All right, cool. Well, am I open it or are you open yeah, it? Yeah. No, cracker open. Right. Okay, so this is a Tacticon belt. And I just discovered them. They say they're a better old company. Um, I've recommended this belt to a lot of people. It's a good budget belt. It's uh, like 30 bucks on Amazon. Now, since this, and I apologize, um, SHFT belts were nice enough to give me a 10% coupon code for everybody that follows Thunder Punk Radio, so I'll leave that in the description. Um, but that was after we ordered this. That's another be budget belt, but it's about twice as expensive as this one, and it's a little bit different. But this is great for starting out. You can spend upwards of $200 on a belt. I like this, and I've used mine for over a year. I just needed something for teaching. I still had the old Alice pistol belts. I still have a couple of them. Um, and when I was in uh, my first combat tour with the infantry in 2004, 2005, we weren't really doing stuff like this yet. The first battle belts were these huge, thick, padded like things or whatever. And I think this is a great one because you have a neoprene belt so you can throw it on over your boxers or whatever, you know, your jeans. But also this part pulls off. And so you can do a Velcro interlock belt. So a Velcro what? Uh, it's like um, what do they call it? Grill me on the uh, in the comments, but it's like an inner belt. So like you can use it to actually hold your pants up. Got so when I was doing security work with law enforcement back in the day, they had those inner belts, but they didn't buckle or anything. They just like ran through your pants, and then you put your duty belt on on the outside okay. of it. But now I know Warrior Poet Society with John Lovell, and there's a couple other companies that make the belts that actually buckle. There's actually a USGI one. Um, a buddy, a Marine actually gave me one, but it was a little too big for me, a little too small for him. But, uh, you know, so there's there's various belts. I recommend definitely grabbing one that has a buckle on it, and then you can run it on your combat pants or your camis or whatever. Um, but it does, with this rubber, and feel that on the inside there, it doesn't move around, and it sits right at your belt line. All right. So it's pretty solid. All right, cool, so what's next? What's next, what's next? I guess, uh, Probably the most important thing, the holster. Yeah, so when you're- Good when you're safari land. There you go. So when you're setting up your belt, um, first thing, you know, you gotta 
when you're buying your gear and you want to get into defensive shooting if you're over 21 or you can get a hold of a pistol through your parents or legal guardians or whatever yeah get a pistol second first thing to get a tourniquet uh tourniquet first then a pistol tourniquet's 29 bucks but then after you have a pistol you have to budget out for a holster and a belt and mag pouches and then after that medical there are certain things that I think is okay to do budget, and if you get into it more, or if there's a lot of hard use, then you can upgrade, such as a belt. They make quality belts from anywhere from 30 bucks to, like I said, upwards of 200. Something that I would not uh, go budget with, though, is an outside the waistband holster. So what do we got here? Want to read that off? I could if I had my glasses. Okay, so, so this is Safari Land. We got Safari Land 6390 RDS. So this, I, so recommend this to most of my clients that are running uh, compatible, you got a compatible firearms, you got a Glock 19, right? Mm -hmm. So what we have here is a light capable red op or red dot, uh, it's already set up for all that, but you don't need all that stuff. So if you just bought your pistol and you know, you're trying to budget everything out, but you want to take a class, you can't afford a light yet. Cause I understand all this stuff costs money and it adds up you can still run this. Now it's easier to reholster if you have a light on it. And then later today, I'm gonna to give you the light off my pistol. So you can see if you like it too, if you wanna run with something okay. else. Um, but then it also is already set up for a red dot and you're planning on an event, especially if you got the eye thing going on. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so what I normally do with this is I take this piece off because I'm not law enforcement. I come from the combat side of shooting and I don't want this to get in the way. And I just wanna be able to draw. And if somebody tries to take my gun, I'm gonna up. So uh, law enforcement isn't really taught the same sort of thing. What were you going to say? I was just going to ask, what, talk about retention, the different yes. kinds of retention. Right? Yeah, so I always recommend getting a level two retention outside the waistband holster. Again, this is a recommendation. You do whatever you want. My reasoning behind this is level one is just passive retention. It's usually just friction, mm -hmm. okay? But if you're taking classes or, God forbid, you have to use this in a defend the home, defend the um, property, defend your community uh, type situation. Level two means you have to manipulate and on the safari land, you have this little thing here, you can't pull the weapon out unless you manipulate this. Level three, there's usually another thing for safari land for these holsters, they have a loop that comes up. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's necessary for us. If you're a law enforcement officer in a big city, you know, you might want to consider that, or if you're doing airborne operations or something, but we're not really going to be doing any airborne operations in the near future, hopefully. Um, but let's say you're taking a class. So one of my best buds, he had his uh, Safari Land friction holster and he was taking my rifle class and we were doing some bounding and his pistol fell out while we were running. And so I just think it's, it's just wise to start off getting everything that you need instead of constantly spending more money and upgrading. So he's already ready to go with the light. He's already ready to go with an optic. And this doesn't do anything. Just when you draw it, it just pops open automatically. This is just to keep debris, dust, rain off your, off your optic. And then this means his weapon is not gonna fall out of his holster. And if somebody walks up and tries to pull it out, they have to know how to manipulate this so he can crank down with his hand and then punch him in the head like Michael would. <laughs> so, but this is a great holster. They make a bunch of different modifications for it. I'll show you quick how it works. So I'm running a very similar one. Mine is injection molded plastic. I wish I had done this to start out with, but I wanted to support a local company in some prairie. I forget their name, but I'll include it in the description. They're awesome people. So same company. Similar holster, this is light capable, it's not micro red dot capable, um, but it manipulates the same way. So we're gonna. So when I put this in here, it's not gonna come out unless I manipulate this and pull it out. This has the same type of mechanism. So the only differences between these really, other than um, being capable of having a red dot sight on it is the material. This is injection molded plastic, and this is Kydex. Kydex, if it gets warped out of shape or something, it's easier to heat this up again and then push it back into, I like these, I think these are sexier looking than these. I think these are fine too. Um, I'm gonna do more research on what I think would be the best because they do make red dot capable, light capable holsters out of both. With that bubbly water, getting a little, little burps going on. <laughs> yeah. But uh, as you can tell, I took um, this thing off. And the only other thing, and later I'd recommend this, is getting one of these clips. And it's just nice to have in case you're going to be running, because I run multiple pistols. Mm -hmm. You can just keep the same battle belt 
and throw on different holsters. You can take this off and put it on your web gear or whatever if you want, or just for packing, because I travel a bit and wrapping up my battle belt, it's easier just to take this piece off. Yeah. And then this folds down a lot smaller. Yeah, I like I like uh I like that idea because I've got several different pistols as well. We got a might want to go old, old. might want to go old school around the beretta. There you go. There you go. I have a yeah, yeah. That's what I called you have with. A, you have a 92 in the yeah, That's what I called with in the Marine Corps. That's what I carry. Oh, there you go. There you go. So yeah, that's what I carry. I hated it though. And it's it's a fine weapon system. I just personally don't like double action. So I'd always replace the safety spring with a Wilson combat spring. So it'd just yeah. work as a decocker. But uh, we can get more into that later. Yeah, yeah, this is this is great. And you can get various lengths of these. I believe this is a mid-length. I hope that's, a, I think we got you a mid-length. Um, and that's like a good one to start out with. These pieces are really inexpensive, and a lot of people, they'll get the mid or the long, and they'll run a leg strap through here. Mm -hmm. I personally don't like doing that. I don't need to do that, but we can see, you know, what you like. And, uh, yeah, cool. So let's move on. We'll get this out of the way. Next up, let's see. Ah, there we go. I think this is from the good folks at, uh, at S-Tech. Okay, there we go. All right. I, uh, no relationship with them other than I use their products. I absolutely love S Tech, and we went with the, the Woodland just because you know. Well, from hey, look at that S Tech. There we go. I see, I got one on the fridge. Um, there you the, you know that was that was what I wore back back in the day. Got my uh, the old uh, Woodland camouflage. <clears throat> I love Woodland, and I love so this is what I started out in too, and then they switched to the camo that shall not be named. Uh, in the army, and that was completely stupid. And then they finally went to multicam slash, I think OCP is what they call it. Um, but anyways, this is a great camo, but it's very specific, you know. And currently in Tennessee, this is a good camo. Multicam works well in Tennessee, but so does Woodland. And I go back and forth between the Midwest now yeah. and uh, uh, the South all the time. And so this is really good in the Midwest, really good. So cool. All right, so right now we got two. We got a double pistol pouch. This is a universal double stack pistol pouch. If you have an m and uh, I love the m and 2.0s, you want to get one with a gap in there because the uh, the base plate is a little thicker. But, there you go. Can you just work it out a little bit? Try that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely, that's So good. yeah, turn upside down and shake it. That ain't coming out. Right. You got it. So I put these things through hell. Um, if you check out the stitching, there it's just like it's like triple stitched here, glued. Um, really, I think it's 500 dinar Kedora. I could be mistaken. I thought I'm wrong. I'll put it in the description. And then I suggested he go with the webbing on the outside. So right now he's setting up with two pistol mags and two rifle mags. If you're running armor, you might want to run 20 rounders. But it's good to have your first line gear. That's what we're calling the battle belt. And so like. A pistol is what you use to fight your way to a rifle. Mm -hmm. If I had to get into a firefight, I would rather use a rifle than a pistol. And so currently on my belt, I have four pistol mag pouches, but I was also teaching primarily pistol classes. And so it was just easier to have like multiples of like five rounds here or three rounds here so I could demonstrate mag changes or whatever. But if it was set up purely for fighting, I would run two of these and only two of those. Mm -hmm. So it's just better to have like this is this is. 60 rounds right now of a standard, you know, modern sporting rifle, 5.56, five, and then you got another 30 in your gun. So if you had to just run with your belt, you could be in a fight. You know, as far as the civilian side, you're already ready to go. You're already ready to fight. You right. know, you can add your chest rig and everything later, but like if you had to ditch everything, at least you're kind of capable with this. So, and then for attachments, we have something called mouse straps. And I like these a lot. They're made by Tactical Tailor and they just weave into the molly here, and then they'll weave into the laser cut molly on the belt. All right, so what else do we got? All right, moving on. So what do you, first off, what do you, before we move on, what do you think of these? I think they're awesome. I mean, I didn't bring any of my rifle mags, so you gotta, you gotta boom, there you go. Yeah, these. Yeah, you gotta work them in a little bit. That's, yeah, after a few times of like going in and out, and that's that Kydex, that same thing your holster is made out of. It's like heat. So if they wear out too, you can heat them up yourself. And, yeah. yeah, and then they still work with Stanag mags, the standard NATO mags. I had mm -hmm. some of those somewhere too, so we can try that out later at the range. I dig it. All right, this is, uh, 
Which one is this? I don't know. Med belt. Ah, no, okay. Med pouch. Cool. All right, so I like these blowout kits. Um, they're really, really good for the range and for civilian stuff. When it comes to like, because I look at everything from an infantry standpoint, but not just like big army infantry, but also from a Minuteman. And that's like kind of the focus of this channel too. And a Minuteman isn't going to most likely not have helo support or, you know, those sorts of things. So with a med pouch, the most important thing is trauma and is it easily accessible uh, either side of the body and can you get stuff out really quickly? And so this is literally like save the life in like moments kind of things. This isn't a boo-boo kit. You can throw extra stuff in there. The difference between a trauma kit and a boo-boo kit, the trauma kit will save your life in seconds. The boo-boo kit will keep you from getting an infection or feeling uncomfortable. And both are important. What's nice about this is, well, I'll just do it online. Yeah. This is just, so, just the... <clears throat> just the kit, yeah, nothing, or just the, the, the case, nothing's the case, in it. Yeah. So what I do, you know, I can reach behind my belt, and actually as I adjust this now, I'm gonna add another rifle pouch and move some stuff around, take some of these off. But I can pull this out, right? This is what's called a blowout kit, and then the inside comes out. And I recommend finding some type of case. You can use a hefty uh, quart size uh, Ziploc bag, go with a brand name, something heavy duty. This was a $5 toiletry kit at Walmart. I saw these and I bought them for everybody I knew that had one of these. And uh, it just keeps your, your gear an extra layer of protection, keeps it dry. But also, since I'm looking at this from a combat side, mm -hmm. um, if I get you know hurt and I need to treat myself, I also still want to get back into the fight. Right. Or I might have to get up and move or my buddies might have to get me up and move. And so if you're running a type of pouch that this is difficult to put back in because in order to do this, you have to weave this through here. Mm -hmm. That's gonna take a while while you're getting shot at and stuff. So I always recommend, did you maybe get one of these in the other? I did. All you right, so one. I recommend, boom. So a dump pouch. And with a dump pouch, you can open this up, take the rest of your medical stuff, because who knows, you might need it or somebody else might need it, throw it in your dump pouch, and then you can get the heck out of there. So just, I got a question. Mm -hmm. You said this was uh, originally a toiletry kit. Toiletry kit, one of those but, travel toiletry kits. Wait, and you're like talking about just, just for the bag. Like, right. You bought so it just I, for the bag yep. and took everything out. You filled it with what you would need for a exactly. drama kit. And it, it's a little tight, but it fits in there just fine. And you honestly don't need this much stuff. I'm going to make another video on what I recommend for a trauma kit. But keep in mind, I was also working on ranges teaching classes. So I had some extra medical tape that isn't necessary for an instant. Medical tape is important, but not as much as I had in here. So you can make this a little more compact. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, I think there's six ninety nine or six bucks or something at Walmart right now. I just saw them. Now they're like blue and pink, I think, or blue and something. Well, there you go. But uh, yeah, so or a Ziploc bag or whatever. But the reason we want a dump pouch, one of the reasons we want a dump pouch is if you're running a blowout kit that you can't stuff back in quickly, you shove it into your Shove it into your dump pouch. Because maybe you're running this in blue jeans and you don't have big cargo pockets. Boom, dump pouch. They're great for all sorts of stuff. I don't know. We used to use these for Intel when we did raids. We'd mm -hmm. like shove like, you know, cell phones or paperwork or whatever into them. Um, we'd use them to hold extra magazines or canteens, um, which canteens are still viable. Canteens and Nalgen bottles because bladders break. They're getting better and better, but you know, you need water. Um, we use it for all kinds of stuff. And these are great on the range for holding your ear pro, because like often an instructor will talk, and be like, okay guys, take your ear pro off, and if you don't have the fancy electronic ones, or your batteries are dead, you can just shove them in here, they don't, you know. That one was from uh, SKD Tactical. SKD Tactical, great website, really high quality gear. The med pack was from Crydex, I think, is that yep. what that says, Crydex? Um, so we're gonna put this belt together? Yeah, so, Real quick, we got a combination of like American made and Chinese stuff, and the thing is, is Almost everything's made in China, so it's kind of hard to get around that. And my recommendation is get what you need to start out and everything. Because like by the time you're done with your kit, you're going to spend thousands of dollars. Yeah. That's why we're spacing it out over time. You know, and like I said, later if you want to upgrade to something else, awesome. Dude, and I'm all about backing veteran-owned companies. So if you're a veteran-owned company and you got some uh, stuff, let me know. I'll, I'll take a look at it for yeah, sure. Same, yeah. DM the channel and you can find him on Instagram. We'll, we'll do all that stuff at the end. So we are trying to decide if we should do two separate videos. And I think we're going to do two separate videos. Yeah. Uh, next one we'll upload later of how to put all this stuff on. So real quick, when you purchase your pistol, 
And if it's for concealed carry, get a good concealed carry holster. And a good one will run you anywhere from like, well, you know, if you shop around from 30 to 120 bucks, this T-Rex arm sidecar I'm carrying was like 120, I believe, around there. And it was worth it. I also have a great holster that I bought from one of my revolvers that was like 30 bucks. And I've used that holster more than anything. Um, after that, once you want to start taking classes and outside the waistband, I recommend retention level two for the reason, you know, it's not going to fall out. Nobody's going to be able to gank it out. And it's good training to figure out how to manipulate that. Um, if Safari Land, I can't recommend these enough. They're amazing. If Safari Land doesn't make one for your weapon though, check out the Blackhawk Omnivore. Um, it's a universal holster and it works pretty well with most types of handguns. So outside the waistband holster, you're going to need a belt and you're going to need mag pouches. So these three things to start out, you can start taking classes because you can have your tourniquet and put it in a pocket. After that, I recommend a tourniquet holder, which is on the way. He did order with all this other stuff. It just didn't arrive in time. So tourniquet is priority. Then after that, I recommend more medical, then a dump pouch. And then you can branch out with like a Leatherman, a fixed blade knife, which I'm stoked because you're going to throw your K-bar. Yeah, he's going to throw his K-bar on here. And you know, that's, that's pretty much it. You can run a flashlight if you want on there, but that's pretty much it. All you really need to, to really start out. Yeah, I think I think that covers everything. All right, so uh, Thunderpunk Radio, baby. Yeah, oh yeah. So how can everybody follow you and your adventures and oh, everything? Uh, um, most of my, most of the actions on IG and um, that Broderick, that Broderick on IG, and then you know YouTube Rumble. You can find me around Michael cool. Broderick. All right, and you can find Thunderpunk Radio on all the uh, the platforms. And I'm Mav11B on Instagram. Cool, and we'll put a link for your stuff in the description. Cool, man, and don't forget to mash that like button and uh, you know leave a comment and subscribe to my man Paul's channel. More, oh, thanks, more man. to come. Hey, also, I would love to hear how you guys have your belt set up and what was the philosophy behind it, so throw that in the comments, too. All right, cool. Thanks, folks. You know what, we'll do one.